this is Goku's son, DBC, and welcome back for uh, the fifth and final comic book review for Robotech, since I was only able to get hold of, of course, five Robotech comics. Now, this is a issue is from the very first series, the Macross Saga. And, of course, as we see, issue number one, and boy, do I wish comic books were still $1.50. But this was uh, released in, I believe, 1985, this comic, because that's around the same time frame, of course, it came out. This, of course, only covers, obviously, the SDF-1. And I love the whole design of it. A big, giant ship, so huge that you can fit an entire city of, like, 50,000 people inside it. That's insanely large. It just looks so awesome right there. As always, of course, we have the ad, like with all of them. Transformation. And it talks about, like previously, to avoid destruction from an alien attack, the SDF-1 was forced to perform a fold operation. However, the resulting space-slash-time warp transporter not only the giant, well, transported not only the giant battle cruiser, but also part of Macross Island, far out into space. Deportating, you know, spaceships, everything out somewhere near the orbit of Pluto. The entire population of the island is now sheltered inside the SDF-1 and the inhabitants are slowly picking up the pieces of their lives and are now trying to return to a normal lifestyle if you could call living in a belly of a space battlecruiser normal. And that is the basic narration. But, of course, as we see, a mobile suit. And all, sadly, one of the main characters, I want to say antagonist, but it's she's technically a protagonist. And, yes, she's considered part of the plot line because of her singing and stuff. But let me just put it this way. I despise Lin Min Mei. She is so freaking annoying. She is like the Mary, you know, like the annoying Mary Jane from the original Spider-Man trilogy, yeah. She is as annoying as Mary Jane. If not, maybe a little bit more annoying because of her voice. But she whines by every little freaking thing. Ugh. Not so much she, she has a very creepy relationship with her cousin. Just saying. Yeah, needless to say, I have a lot of memories of this show. Obviously, this is my favorite of the three seasons or series, of course. They were actually separate stories, but here, as we can see, Min Mei is talking to her uncle and aunt about things. And they're discussing with her about different stuff and what to do. And she suggests, of course, to open a restaurant like they had on Macross Island. And that is actually the mayor and, of course, his wife. And they see they're saying up shopping. Of course, we see her in her traditional kimono. And taking orders, of course, as a waitress. And they start picking on her and stuff, and actually ask also about the boy, of course, Rick Hunter, and his staying with her. And of course, obviously, really, he's the main character. Since they killed off his brother, in the original Japanese version, Roy Foker was technically just good friends, like family, but in the English dub version, they made Roy Foker instead actually Rick Hunter's brother. It 
it's interesting, really. The differences between the English and the Japanese versions of the show. And of course, this in Japan was just called Macross. Over here, it's known as, of course, Robotech Macross Saga. It's really interesting. And of course, here we have the main head honcho, of course. Which, boy, does he put up with a lot of stress throughout this series, poor guy. And they're asking what to do about things because they discovered the warp device ends up just all of a sudden disappearing into thin air. He goes back and stuff to see where he spent some time with Min May remembering things when they were alone. And of course, that's Roy Foker there. Trying to basically talk to him about snapping out of it. And there he's also trying to discuss and convince uh, Rick, Hunt, Rick to actually join the military. Of course, we see the outside of the ship there with the jet fighters. And he's also trying to get through. And of course, here we have pictures, of course, as always, of the other sagas. Yep. Okay, this is 1985. And here we, of course, have two big main at first antagonists, which become sort of protagonists. And, of course, that is the main head honcho over this group of the Zentrani. And, of course, uh, his name... Darn it. I hate when sometimes I forget characters' names. There's so many freaking animes I've seen over the years, it's hard to forget it. Remember every single character's name when you've seen over 130 anime, I might add. Uh, Britai. That's his name, Britai. See, I remembered it. But, obviously, if you look at some of the designs of some, of course, the mobile suits, at least you can't say they copied Gundam like so many other animes out there. The overall mech designs and everything in this series is very different than actually that. It has more in common, I think, overall. Maybe a little bit closer to Transformers than actually Mobile Suit Gundam. But e because of the transforming element. But even so, the designs of the mobile suits are very different than even Transformers. So I have to give it to Robotech for not trying to copy everyone else, but trying their own style. And, obviously, it makes them distinctive, because people still to this day remember the Robotech series. And rather fondly, I might add. Of course, that's a picture of the SDF-1 when it's not transformed into, obviously, the big... robot-looking form. Instead, it just looks into a normal spaceship. But the thing is massive. We're talking a couple miles long. I mean, that ship is seriously huge. And, of course, we see Rick Hunter and Min May talking. And they think back about the incident with Britai. And there's Britai, of course, his right-hand man, which is actually also a scientist. And now we see an attack again on the SDF-1. And that's the one I'm reviewing, of course. And I will say, given that this comic is actually 31 years old, it's in very, actually, really good condition, I will say. It's hard to believe I picked up each of these Robotech comics for one dollar a piece. Some, it's very much an underrated comic, as well as a very underrated anime. It's very much undervalued, as far as I'm concerned. Keep in mind, this has come from a big Robotech fan. But, and these are some of the main females who work on the bridge, and of course, Lisa Hayes is the main 
character which will become the future love interest for Rick Hunter later on. Thank goodness he ends up growing out of Min May, ends up going for Lisa Hayes, which is much more intelligent and much more mature. And they discuss about things. And he's asking her question on things. Obviously, is kind of shocked when he's talking about different stuff. First, we see the countdown. And they're getting ready to try to do a fold again, obviously. Well, to transform the bow ship. And we see fast little pieces where the ship's breaking apart, destroying the buildings and stuff. Which is causing a lot of hecticness in the ship. Luckily, of course, he catches Minmay. Oh, how sad. It's yes, being very sarcastic, I know. And there's the fully transformed SDF-1. Is that not just awesome looking right there? That massive ship. You have this cool space battle going on. And it's charging up its particle weapon. And you would think it would look more like a laser beam. But instead it looks more like fire than anything. And it's pretty impressive. And he's like, what's happening? And they're all happy. Enemy ships destroyed. He's like, get me full damage report on all sections immediately. Whatever damage that occurred is... Yep. Able to be fixed. It says, however... We fired the main gun and completely destroyed the enemy ships. Thank you for your cooperation. Please report any casualties, injuries, or damages to your section shelter officer. Have a nice day. And she's like, I wonder if the Chinese restaurant was destroyed. Minmay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to join the Robotech forces. This is what convinces him in the end. Roy Foker, you did some pretty nice flying back there, Skull Squadron. Let's go home. To be continued. And that is a review for issue number five of Robotech the Macross Saga, or also known as Season 1 to me. Please remember thumbs up this video, like, subscribe, follow me at twitter.com slash gokusundbc, as well as on Google+. And I'll see you all next time, and these will be the next two comic books I will be doing. Street Fighter Cross G.I. Joe issue number four. And Star Wars Darth Vader and the Lost Command issue number three. Since that's the only issue I was able to get hold of. So stay tuned for those two future comic books. And as always, same YouTube time, same YouTube channel. Follow me at twitter.com slash as well as Google+. And I'll see you next time.